here we are. It's Tuesday, Tuesday again. again. <laughs> it just keeps happening, right? I'm not sure whether to be happy about that or feel yeah. bad for all of you. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Oh, but yeah, Christmas. So Christmas came and went, right. and we all yeah, seemed to have survived. It was definitely a little bit um, different. different. Definitely um, not necessarily what we we're all used to, but it was um, it was still very nice. How about yours? Nice, nice yeah. and quiet. It was quiet. Mm -hmm. In case anybody's wondering, yes, we watched Wonder Woman we did. on Christmas. Mm -hmm. We should have watched it. We didn't we didn't make it so that we watched it at the same time. We, we, we didn't. Um, I don't think you could have stayed awake as long as it took me to watch <laughs> it. So, <laughs> yeah, Lisa made me a wonder. Um, I have to put like a nose thing in it because oh, it um it goes up under, and my glasses are constantly fogged. But it's super cool. I wore it yes. out this weekend. Um, I didn't get anybody like the cool lady that you had today. She was pretty great. She was like, pointed at my mask, and then she was like, bam, bam, bam. And I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy thing is, is, I knew exactly what she was doing, right? <laughs> right. It's so funny. But, uh, People are hysterical. You know, I don't think anyone else in my house enjoyed the movie like I enjoyed the movie, but. Um, I would have enjoyed it no matter what they did. Right, right. Um, and at one point when they finally started playing her doo 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 doo, yeah. music, I was like, oh, the music, it's going to get good. Right. <laughs> everybody was like, mom, you're so weird. <laughs> it's good to be a little weird, right? It's good. Life would be boring. You know, they have these wonderful memories that they can look back and laugh at me. Right. Because, you know, every kid needs those. Right. David and I were having a. a I would, I should say a heated discussion oh. because I was telling him that that's the Mandalorian and, uh, and he was like, no, it's not. And I'm like, Google it. <laughs> and then at this weekend, everything I turned on, he was in it. And I was like, I never Gotta even seen it. the guy before the Mandalorian. I don't recall. Right. right? And now it, all of a sudden he's, he's just there. Everything. He's, he's the guy. So yeah. He's that guy. Yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, we've got a, a nice little grouping already joining us, and hi, Judy, and Anne, oh, look, and Lois, Lois says and... she thinks we're both Wonder Women. Aww. <laughs> That's so sweet. Aww. My day has been made. I right? can go home happy now. <laughs> <laughs> you, just don't oh. mess with my new watch, you know. Right? Got to get the... Got to get right. it going the right way, otherwise, I, yeah. Right. I, uh... Wow. Mine finally gave up the ghost. I I've been warm most of the day, which... I'm probably going to need to move that. Um, possibly, <laughs> yes. Maybe we should do that ahead of time. Kind of do that before we knock it right. out the floor. Because we've been known to do things like that. That, that never happens. So we hope you guys all um, enjoyed your uh, long weekend. We certainly enjoyed our long weekend. Sorry we weren't here to answer questions. Um, we were watching Wonder Woman. We were watching Wonder Woman. <laughs> and... Um, I had a very kitchen Christmas. You did. Which was really nice. So I got to use a bunch of my new toys and uh, we had some fun. So that's awesome. Oh, okay. So well, Holly, I don't know that we're obsessed. We no. just think she's really cool. She is really cool. I mean, I mean, any woman that kicks butt like her, I mm -hmm. mean, hey, you know, I said the same thing when I went to see Captain Marvel. I'm like, Caitlin, get in the car, we're going to the movies. And she says, well, what are we going to go see? We're going to go see a woman kick some butt. Okay. She's, that was all she needed to know. There yeah. you go. Yeah. So, we, um, since I had the week off, we watched it. We watched some of the, the DC. The other yeah, comic. Yeah. yeah. We did um, Batman and, and Superman and uh, Superman, uh, the original mm -hmm. Wonder Woman, just to catch back up. Yeah. I was, I was, um, I got a nice little giggle when I saw that the original Wonder Woman was now on um, as well. So yeah. I was like, oh, man, I have to buy the rest of those because <laughs> I may have purchase it is very entertaining and to see her like floating across the screen in her invisible jet just yeah. sitting there right Wouldn't it, was, it would be very nice entertaining to have an invisible jet that would be really great it right? would be great to have any jet true invisible or not i would get but... so many more hours uh, back out of my week right. from driving <laughs> to fly I, I everywhere i figured my my dad could totally like, pilot it right eight hours a week i lose in the car <laughs> it's a whole i day. don't lose that much in the car no mm -mm. i mean at least i'm being chauffeured but yeah, you can at least, you know, typey type, <laughs> whatever you're doing. Um, that's how that's when she answers like all of your stuff. Yeah, whatever that happens to be. Yes, sir. You lose a lot of time with your pre and post flight checks, though. True. Hayden just pointed out all of that. Um, but that's for the pilot. That's not us. <laughs> right. So all of that like, stuff. They I mean, if it's that. invisible, who would know? Right. <laughs> 
totally beat radar. Goes off I mean, the radar. There, there you go. Yeah. Nobody would have to know. Oh, so, yeah. Yes, my mom enjoyed the movie. And, and it was funny because, of course, no one else at the end, I think we were the only two that saw the, the blurb at yeah. the end. And she, I, I don't think anyone else would have known. Well, Jeff would have, my right. husband, but he wouldn't have cared, you know, who she was. Yeah. And it'd be interesting to see if they um, make something more out of mm-hmm. that. We won't give any. I would away. think that they would because, I mean, she made a whole comment and a whole thing about I right. couldn't find her. Right. But she, There's got to be something yeah. in there. But yeah. Um, All right. Yeah. Okay, enough of that. Enough of that. Yeah, sorry. We <laughs> we're just we get on a tangent. Right. You know, it's, we thought it was Six enjoyable. Six whole minutes. Six woman. whole minutes. All I got was, that was two and a half hours, Mom. I will never get back. <laughs> that is too long. Oh. No movie should be over an hour and a half. That's but. funny. Gotta love it. So, um, so there's a whole bunch more people that have said hello. Hi. So hi to all of you. Yes, and um, again, thanks for, for joining us. We have a little bit different type of a little demo that we're going to uh, start off with today. So um, what, is there anything else we want to yak about before we get into that? Uh, no, um, no. I think, I think we're probably, go. I think let's just jump let's just into it. it. Did you see this? I did. Were you impressed? I figured that out. I, I have no doubt that you would be able to figure that out. Actually, what I was like was, I was like, did I leave that there? Because I was playing with those. No, um, Kathy called. I, I know, it was Kathy watching. Sure, Kathy yeah. called. She's like, how do I do this? And I'm like, hang on. I got to go to, I, I, can't, I don't I remember which button. Buttons. I got to push the buttons. Yeah. It's what you got to do, guys. You got to just push the buttons and you will totally figure mm-hmm. anything out. And boy, so. do we have some really, we have fun stuff for you today, right? <laughs> It's cleaning, right? Who, but it's the end of the year, and you should clean. It's totally end of the you year. You should cleaning. clean your year. Be, you should clean your year. Clean your year the before year. the end of you the year. You should definitely clean your machine before the end of the year. But if you haven't done if it, if you a haven't while, done it in a while, we're going to talk about um, how you should do it. Yes. How you should not do it, and then um, more importantly, how to put everything back where it's supposed to be, mm-hmm. because that's where we get. Um, a lot of machines in here because they're not working right. Right. I um, mean, it tends to be, uh, unfortunately, an operator mm-hmm. um, error on that. So we're going to show you. So that is not you. Right. Um, we'll show you how to do all of that. So this um, kind of goes to everyone but Solaris and Luminaire people. Pretty much. I mean, even if you don't have one of our brands of machines, it's still going to be pretty dang close. Mm-hmm. Um, and the concepts and everything behind it are still going to be the same. Mm-hmm. All Barb. three, Barb. Wow, you are on top of it. How big was the trash bomb? I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's a lint bomb. I, whatever. I did not need to hear that again today. All right, so I'm going okay. to move over. So here. yeah, Lisa's going to go. Um, she's going to slide very far away. Yes. <laughs> good and six feet. Good fit. Yeah, we're we're um, keeping we our distance now. Two yards apart. We are socially distancing. Yes, and I'm going to um, switch the camera here. All right. So this machine happens to be. Um, a BQ1350. So this is that lovely series. Um, it's the exact same if you have a 500, 700, 950, 1350, 900, um, 1300, or Presto, Presto 2, Brilliant. What was before the Brilliant? Um, there was something. Um, Lyric. Lyric or Soprano. There was another one. I'm totally drawing the The Brilliant took over for something, but I don't It did. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Don't remember remember that later. So like we said, a lot of people um, come in and they have had a big goobered mess underneath there or some reason that they had to take this apart. So this little guy right here um, is going to become and move forward. The machine will probably beep at you. There's nothing wrong with that. If you do happen to have a luminaire, it will tell you to turn the power off. Yeah, I, I ignore that. Me error. too. So um, don't freak out. If you're having problems moving this, Might slide be this easy. out. Yeah, I, we definitely recommend it. It'll make so it it's certainly easier. a lot easier. And then this moves nice and easy. It just snaps into place. It is not a screw or anything. There's a little lip on the back here that you can use to push forward right here where my... Uh, Sparkly fingernail is back there. Where the gray fingernail is. <laughs> it's, you can't see sparkle, huh? Can you see the sparkle now? You can. now? Yeah. Okay, there you go. All right, so, um, of course, the little um, bobbin cover, you will have to take off once you start putting everything back together, but we can just set that aside in one piece for the moment. This little black guy here is what we need to get out. Sometimes, if you just grab hold of the bobbin, if it's still stuck in the tension, a lot of times that, oops, sorry, will come out all on its own. Otherwise, just keep pulling it will come out. So we want this guy to come completely out of the machine. Um, When you have it out, take a look at it. 
if you see a bunch of holes back here, um, you need to bring that in to see Tony. <laughs> um, those would be made from your needle actually puncturing through, um, and you can get thread caught on those. So if you're getting a lot of thread jams, you can have some rough spots back here um, that is actually causing the thread to get caught, and then it frays and makes mm -hmm. a nice, another big mess. But let's point out that big felt piece That's there. where I was going next. <laughs> so I'm going to get my fat finger out of the way here. So this piece right here, we've got um, light gray and we've got blue, all right? These pieces are extremely important. They do not want to come off. Don't take them off. Um, some people think that that's a lint ball that was caused by whatever they sewed. It's that is important. That is actually there to help brush the thread out of the way when your knife comes out and all this good jazz. So we need to make sure that that is staying there. Don't pull those off. If you pull those off, you need to come see Tony. All right, so that is a very important part. Again, I'm just gonna set that down and get that out of the way. So in here is where um, we have generally, we're going to start seeing um, kind of a ring around the bottom or all the way around the outside because the black bobbin case will actually push the fuzz out to the outside edges. So we want to make sure that that is um, not there anymore. That's the really the big goal. Mm -hmm. I find it a lot easier to take my foot off so it's, I'm not working around it. So all and of us just have a maybe your needle out. You can take your needle out if you would like to, absolutely. I just like to stab myself every now and then, but it's certainly, um, holy crap. I know my hand's in the way, I'm sorry guys. Big fat wrist coming through. All right, so we now have nothing to poke us and we don't have no foot that's in the way. Um, depending on how large of a mess that you've made, you might have a bunch of thread kind of jammed, some down here and some up here and nothing really wants to move. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off the needle plate. This is my favorite little screwdriver. It looks like a quarter and it's got this cute little tab on the side and it fits down here nice and easy. This is actually what it was designed for. If you go in the back and steal one out of Tony's drawers, it actually says needle plate screw right on the drawer cover. So now you guys know how to find that. <laughs> um, you see, can see that I'm actually loosening. Once I have that loose, I'm unscrewing it with my finger rather than trying to fight with my screwdriver underneath an area that I don't have a lot of space. If you are smart before you've started, you may have somewhere to set your screws so they don't go rolling. I'm just gonna put them on this little okay. note, um, pad here, but um, we don't wanna lose those and they do like to roll. So make sure you put them somewhere that's safe. Last thing you wanna do is drop it inside the machine. Don't, don't do that. So um, if I do that, we'll just pretend I didn't. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, we have a mechanic here that can fix that for yes. us. You'll have to bring it in or shake it. Or you can turn it upside down and shake it. A mm -hmm. lot of times that will. So the machine's beeping at me again, which is fine. So I am just, again, attempting. It's not going like I want it to. There we go. All right. I was trying to keep my hand out of the way more than anything. It's really beeping at me. Do you hear that? I do. It wants. It really wants you to put that needle plate cover back on. It really does. All right, we're gonna have to use a screwdriver because I can't reach over there. It's probably not loud. So you can also kind of trick your machine by pushing down on the little lever that tells it that it's not got a needle plate on it <laughs> to make it stop beeping at you. I'm just not. So just so you guys know, even the quote unquote professionals sometimes take a half a second to get this screw out of the way. Mm -hmm. And it's just because I can't. I don't generally try to do this from the side. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's a little awkward, so <laughs> forgive. All right, so now I have my needle plate and I'm just gonna set that aside. I now have complete access to all the little nooks and crannies. Um, depending on what fabric you're sewing with is gonna depend on how much fuzz that you get down there. Um, I don't know how many of you that are watching or listening at the moment were here for the, the beautiful Halloween um, <laughs> Halloween Kimberbell. Kimberbell that we had. We were sewing um, a, a ruffle basically out of the organza with the glitter dots. The luminaire was covered. And I mean covered. It was. With purple glitter. It was just everywhere. Yeah. Um, I don't know who ended up with that machine. I wasn't here what? when you oh guys my God, it did that, but I <laughs> sewed on the machine right after <laughs> and I went like, to put what? a bobbin in and I was like, it's Ooh, like, it's, it's purple. like Barney it's, died it's, in it there. Is <laughs> Barney blew up inside of that machine. That is about right. So you guys, we have talked about these beautiful, um, I'm doing it over the machine here. So you can see these are fantastic pointed. They are called a precision tip tweezer. I can grab my threads from just about anywhere. 
um, I can reach down in there and pick those out and pull out from all these different areas. Um, there is one more piece of fuzz that we want to make sure we don't remove. And that is underneath this area right here. This is actually your blade. And when it cuts, this shoots forward, cuts the thread and comes back. And that little fuzz in there keeps the thread from hopefully being where you don't want it. Sometimes you will see thread sticking out of there and that actually you're not getting a good cut. And if you take off that gray piece, you can actually see a thread there. Grab the thread and pull it out. It will free your, your knife up and it'll magically start cutting again. Um, it's not actually generally a new blade needed. It's usually something that's jamming the blade. So that little area right here um, is what we're talking about. So there's a little bit of fuzz right there. We wanna make sure we, we leave in there. So we have this beautiful brush and cloth cleaning set. It's oh so clean. This little guy is $9.95. And I just sold some the other day. And so this is the last one that we have in store, but we're going to put them on order. So we'll have them again here real soon. And in here we have um, two different brushes and a cleaning cloth. So that cleaning cloth is really great for um, your, screen, your screen, your screen, <laughs> sorry, your glasses, your that phone. One, that's what you call a brain fart. My brain just <laughs> totally took a nap and there was nothing coming out. Sorry about that. All right, so these are really great brushes. This one's nice and long, so you can really get um, and it, the fuzz. And it kind of like static clings it to that. Does. It does. It's a really nice, it's, um. there's a word for that kind of, is it nylon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the word. <laughs> like, there's a word for that, um, but you can really get in there. What tends to happen is that fuzz of whatever gets pushed into the outside edges because as the black case is spinning around in there, it pushes all the fuzz out. We actually had a customer come in once and ask for the replacement felt that went underneath their black bobbin case. Now, I don't know who this was. I was not here when it happened, but I certainly heard the story many, many times. Um, and so basically, guys, she never cleaned her machine. And so it had felted fuzz into that area. You don't want that. We don't want to replace it. We want to remove it. <laughs> so we're going to just brush everywhere in here and down there, depending upon um, how stuck it is this one's a little bit stiffer you do of course get there's that word again why does that word always come up when we're talking about something um so you want to get all of the fuzz out of your feed dogs underneath if you have a big thread jam in here you want to get that out it's really easy once you've taken the needle plate off it actually usually comes off with the needle plate yeah sometimes um, but you want to make sure that all of those loose threads are out of there um, unfortunately, this is a brand new machine, so there's no fuzz in here at all. Um, there will probably have, be some on. There will probably be some in the luminaire because we haven't cleaned it um, since we and did all of those bellas and all that chenealing stuff. So it should be nice and, and dirty when we show you that. So that'll be really nice for you guys to see what, um, but how bad it can look. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have gotten in the habit. Now, you guys, of course, know you've been watching us for months now. Sarah and I both sew on a luminaire at home. I have gotten in the habit of every day when I sit down, I clean out my case. Um, and so we're going to show you that machine in just a few minutes. Um, so at this point, I'm going to show you how to put this one back together and what order to put things in. A lot of people will take their nice little black guy and slide it in there because it's nice and easy, right? It's open. So, hey, I could just pop that in there with no problem, right? Wrong. Do not do that. All right. So what can happen if you put that in here first, when you put the needle plate on, you're actually going to pinch that beautiful little black circle guy in there called your bobbin case. And the problem is it doesn't allow it to circulate properly and then you don't get sewing. Have you ever seen that problem? Never. <laughs> <laughs> Never. So, I don't I don't know if you heard, but we were talking and I'm like, this is exactly what happened to her. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep, it is. So I am going to put in um, that one screw over there as much as I can with my fingers and I know my hands in the way, I'm sorry. So Holly said um, that she was told um, a drop of oil in the center. So let's talk about that for just a second. Go so for it. While, brother, I, while I have fun well, with these screws. Yeah, while she's that. got her hand in there. So brother and baby lock machines are machines that you do not have to oil. However, um, sort of our little tech tip is that if you do put a drop of oil in your machine, um, so when you're looking in there, like right where Lisa's hand is, you see like there's the black ring and then you have like the metal outside part. 
So if you were to put a drop of oil right on that metal outside piece, um, when you put your bobbin case back in, um, it kind of gives it a little buffer. So it sits on something. Um, the bottom of the bobbin case does have some metal in it and there's plastic. Um, nothing bad will happen if you don't do it. But if you notice after you've been sewing for a little while that your machine is a little bit louder than kind it of a used to be. Sound. Yeah. Um, then by putting a little drop of oil in there, and it, it just needs to be one little drop. It doesn't need to be a ton. Actually, um, it should not be a ton. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it will quiet let's... the machine um, right back up for you. So um, it'll be a little less noisy. So if I don't have any um, oil in my sewing room, I should just go out to the garage and grab my husband's WD-40, right? No. 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 Don't oh, do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Okay, that was total sarcasm, people. <laughs> do not do that. Right. Um, so we do sell some oil. Um, it's Zoom oil. It's it's machine um embroidery or not machine embroidery, but a machine sewing machine oil. It's um clear. it's lightweight, it's clear, um, and it's not heavy. So it's not it's not like olive oil um or vegetable oil. It's nope. it's, it's very really lightweight. thin. Very, very thin. Um and on the reverse, mm -hmm. if you have a hinge door that you close your sewing room and it squeaks, you can put that oil on that door and it will work. Mm -hmm. But don't go the other way around. <laughs> right. And also don't cook with that. Don't cook with that. No, no, no. Uh, so I, don't I mix your oil. oil. I used all of the olive oil yesterday. I'm going to have to go get some more. So, um, Karen, where do you put the drop of oil? So Lisa's going to take um, the, that little, those cool little tweezers and she's going to point. So you're just going to put a drop of oil right there so here's the outer metal rim mm -hmm. all right and that is where this metal rim is kind of going to sit against so the metal underneath here that it's going to push the oil between those spots and it should quiet that down mm -hmm. if you are having noise yes but again to repeat it is not a part of the system's requirements for you to oil these machines. If you have a multi-needle, which I know you do, Holly, and that is absolutely recommended that you put a drop of oil in that bobbin case. Frequently. Frequently. Okay. So there are different types of machines and they have different requirements. Mm -hmm. um, but all of our current model machines that are sewing flatbed or sewing embroidery combo flatbeds or embroidery only flatbeds do not require you as the consumer to add oil. But you can. But you can if you feel like it's making a little right. noise. Right. And um, we, most of us do that occasionally. Um, and again, you don't need to do it all the time. It's just something that you can do occasionally. No, um, if you're cleaning out your bobbin case every single day, um, you probably aren't going to put a drop of oil in every single time. Oh, but no. you can you can notice um, when it gets really dry or, again, when it gets a little bit more um, noisy. So um, you can do that. So, and honestly, if you're cleaning it all the time, you're probably removing the built-in oils. So there are uh, reservoirs, if you will, that are in there that kind of self oil which is why you're not required to and if you're cleaning that all the time like i'm doing well i don't sew every day but i mean right. every time i sit down i do that and when i'm doing i am probably removing some of the oil that needs to be there so it's not necessarily uh you know not recommended but it's right. not required right okay any other questions on that guy um no all right so marge asked how about using canned air so canned air is um, actually not as bad as a lot of people will talk about. Um, however, you do not want to blow towards the machine. So all of the fuzz that's in here, you don't want to blow and have it go towards the motors in the machine. Right. Um, there is a screw here. Um, if you want to use canned air and you want to use it like, holy crap, I want to spray the crap out of this machine, you want to take this end cap off so that you're just blowing everything out of the machine. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, it is not necessarily a bad thing, but it can be bad if you're blowing all of that stuff into where your motor is, because that can bind things up. Um, we saw a machine come in and the hand wheel was frozen and she was like, yeah, I have no idea what's happening. So Tony pops it open and it literally looked like a Brillo pad in poor, inside that poor lady's machine. She just had so much stuff and it was all, in the, the it yeah. was packed in and it had wrapped itself around the belts and the core. I mean, it was a mess in there. Yep, it can um, be. But if you are blowing towards that, you can cause that to happen. Um, just 
from a frequency of getting a whole bunch of stuff where it's not supposed to belong. Um, if you want to use it, you want to blow out of the machine um, the best that you can. The best that you possibly mm -hmm. can. You can also use a little teeny tiny vacuum. They, yep, make they have little, little tips, tips that you can put on a vacuum so, um, for um, that, which is actually really great. Right. If it does a nice job. Um, keyboard attachments. Yep. Keyboards are um, perfect. Are attachment the, pieces the best for little that. pieces, and that can really keep everything nice and uh, clean in there. Okay. So um, Lisa talked about making sure that um, you basically are not putting the machine back in the same order that you took it apart. Pretty much. <laughs> All right, so we want to have this metal plate in securely before we add this back in. All yes. right, so um, when I'm showing somebody a new machine, um, you know, that they're taking home and they say, okay, well, how do I clean this? Um, there is that line of the edge of your needle plate. There is a line, and I know it's um, lighting is a little bit different. I don't know if I can get it to where up there. Can you see it right there? Yep. So this line right here is the line that's going to literally line right up with that needle plate. So you have a, let me see if I can tip this up and actually point at the same time. I'm just not sure I can get it in screen. Can they see the white? So right here, there's a white dot. Yep. Okay. That white dot is on all of these machines. All right. And what we're looking for, thank you. Hey there. What we're looking for is to line up that white dot, whoop, whoop, there I am, with the white arrow on the bobbin case itself. So we are going to angle that in so that that straight edge is towards the needle plate. And then we're gonna wiggle, it just dropped right in there. <laughs> Doesn't usually happen that easy. Okay, so that white arrow is pointing to my white dot and this line is completely lined up with my needle plate. I see a very long something. Is that I, an actual comment? No, or is that I think Jean somebody might stepped on be a, um, leaning on something. Leaning on something. Okay. She's, I'm like, uh, oh, that's a big comment. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to tip this up one more time. So hopefully you guys can see. Mm -hmm. All right. The white arrow is pointing right to, right here's the white arrow and here's my white dot. So yep. you're lining those two up. And then again, you want this straight line to line up with your needle plate. That is correct positioning for that bobbin case. All right. So um, sometimes it goes in super easy and sometimes not so much. Um, but if you angle this back piece in um, kind of at a 45, I don't know if I can keep my hand out of there, kind of at a 45 and then drop and then wiggle just a little bit. See, last time it did it so perfectly. I looked so smart trying to get my hands out of the way. Right. All right. And just give it a little wiggle. You can usually get it to drop in there. Mm -hmm. All right. So angle down and then flatten out. All right. And that's how we get that little guy back in. Um, Tina asked, which machine are we cleaning? We are currently cleaning a, um, a BQ 1350, but this is pretty common on it's pretty much all, all of every machine I have on the floor here. And, and for a while, and, um, yes. the, the bobbin cases all go back in the same and it's very, very similar. They all um, have the white arrow and the white dot. Yep. They all have the line that follows the line of the needle plate. Mm -hmm. um, that and is that not needle plate different. needs to go on first, first in all of them. So just to reiterate, the metal needle plate comes on first before we put this in. If you put this in, and then put this on, you're not going to be happy. Things aren't going to start moving correctly. You'll have some sewing issues when you start rethreading, and you'll call us and you'll say, my machine's not working. I had a jam, I cleaned it, and it's not working now. Yep. And I would say 99% of the time when we get that phone call, they have put the black case in before putting the needle plate back on, and just redoing that fixes the problem. Yep. Hokey doke. All right, so... This um, is my cover, all right? So when I took it off, the bobbin cover was still on there. I just need to pop that out because I still want to put my bobbin back in. Can you imagine? <laughs> so this is, um, I call this an L-shaped. If you ever are um, on the phone with me and I'm walking you through this, this is your L-shaped gray piece that I'm talking about. Um, and we're just going to set that down right on the bed of the machine and then push it to the back. So it's going to snap in. And we have literally installed it. That's that's all there is to it. There's no fancy business, no screws or anything. Again, 
um, there's a little divot in the machine right here and that pushes forward to pop it out and it just pushes right back straight in to go back in. All right. From here, I'm just going to thread everything just like I would have before. Um, so not that you guys don't all know this, but just as a you know reference, we want the tail on the left hand side and we want that to look like a, P. a letter P. Um, so we want that tail here. When we drop that in, all right, we can then come around and cut. Um, we do occasionally see, and everybody makes mistakes. We all know which way that bobbin goes in, but every once in a while we just do it wrong. Mm -hmm. And it goes around there just fine. It's until it goes to try to pick it up and there's no tension on it that you see the problem. So that is um, where you don't have bobbin tension. We probably put that in the wrong direction. And then we just lock that back over and we are all ready to sew. We are. We are totally ready. Yes. So do Super you want to switch easy. back so yes. that we don't make everybody throw up as we're bouncing cameras <laughs> around? <laughs> all right. So um, what we are going to do now um, is we just wanted to show uh, the Luminaire and the Solaris as well. Um, just because um, that's the other way that you clean a machine. So that's that makes that just a little bit different. So this um, is the only other setup mm -hmm. that's currently out there right now for a flatbed. Um, yeah, for our flatbeds. Yep. All right. So Lisa's moving move the camera, camera here. around here. And our jerry rigged stands. We're making it work. We are totally <laughs> making it work. All right. All right. We're almost there. Oops. That looks pretty good. I think that's all right. All right. So, all right. You guys ready for the big heavy right? duty stuff, right? So again, this is what both of us still want at home. Um, and due to these lovely Tuesday afternoon conversations with all of y'all, there's quite a few of you that have said, you know what, you I want to do club. that too. You, you totally, <laughs> um, you just wanted to be like us. Yeah. We, we, we totally appreciate that. It is. Yes. And you know what? Cause, cause we're like that kind of person. If you buy a Luminaire and you say that you watch this, we'll throw in that really cool cleaning kit. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, you all bet. Right. <laughs> all right. So here is the Luminaire's needle plate. If you guys notice, it's not two parts. They can't really see the... Um... Oh, let me just angle that over just a bit. There you go. Ta-da! All right. So this is the needle plate on either the Luminaire or the Solaris. To change out that bobbin, we've got that little lever there, which is just like... Um, just like the other one, just a slightly different slightly shape. Slightly different. So do you want to push the magic button? Yeah, it looks a little different. Um, it's it's more metal in here. So yep. if you're looking into this and you're wondering why it looks a little bit different, that's it's what. It's a little shinier because it's a little different. So this little button over but here. We don't have the same screws on here. So we're just going to touch this little guy right here. Ta-da! And look at that. It comes with sound no effects. No screws! <laughs> It is so much fun to use because it's just so easy. It, right. And then, um, I mean, I never cleaned my machine. So <laughs> I do now because it's, so it's just so easy. easy. So all of those oh, parts well, come out. We definitely, there's We dirt. definitely have some fuzz in there. So mm -hmm. you guys can see um, some fuzzies in there. I'm going to set the camera back down. I think you can still see. Yep. I don't think they good. need to see the little button anymore. All right. So if we take our lovely little fuzz blusters and we can see... Um, all of the fuzz. So we can vary. And then I'm, again, I'm trying to not get crazy, but you can see there's actually quite a bit of fuzz that's in there. And you just kind of swirl that around until you get all of your little fuzzies out. If you get a big ball, you can pick those up with those fantastic tweezers. I can't see what I'm doing, by the way. So um, <laughs> I'm just swishing it around because I can't see a dang thing from where I'm sitting. Yeah, it looks really good though. Oh, look, there's a little thread. So that's where um, our, fun our, our fun little tweezers can just go in there and grab. Um, it really would help to see. So close. Glasses would be good here, too. You could put them on. They're on your head. They are. Imagine <laughs> that. <laughs> I think we'll there's put them a there. piece of thread back here, yep, too. There's some fuzz back there. Oops, that stuck to you. Me. So there's um, some fuzz in our feed dogs. We can clean that out as well. Um, so we just want to get and clean up all that stuff. Now, again, here is our blade. And this is that, night. it's a little bit bigger piece of felt on this machine. So we don't wanna grab that out there, but if you have fuzzies in there, like we do, we can remove the fuzz because we wanna make sure that that blade has a good clearance to get in there and actually cut our thread. Cause aren't we all annoyed 
when our thread doesn't cut? Yes. <laughs> so Can bad. you imagine sewing without a thread cutter on your machine? No. I honestly can't. When, when I sit down at a machine here that doesn't have that, I'm um, annoyed. I, I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> it's just like, oh my God, where's a pair of scissors? <laughs> right? It's like, and the, the, I don't know where the anything side is. thread cutters are not exactly in the same spot on all of the machines. They're right. up or they're down slightly, or left or right a little bit. But they're all somewhere in so that vicinity. You're, you got your thread and you're like moving all around over there. Like, I know it's here somewhere. Yep. <laughs> you are not wrong. All right. How okay. Do Pretty good. We'll see. No, it's it's uh it's looking a lot cleaner now. Okay. So here's the crazy part. You want to put that black thing back in? Because I'm totally gonna black the 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 uh no, nope, you gotta put that in. Oh, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I was just gonna show them that they have to. I'm I'm gonna be quiet. Now. Okay, so um in case you were wondering, so you have there's there's only there's one way to put this away. There's only one way to do this. There's no screwing this one up. Because you can't put this through. Um, so you have no choice but to put this in in the right order. Um, you can see the little green arrow a little bit better on here. It's a little bit bigger. So it's right green? here. I'm sorry. It is. Uh, it's, it's, I'm talking. I'm thinking of the green arrow. <laughs> he's cute. He is cute. Yes, he's um, cute. The white arrow and um, the white dot. I have. It's. It's, it's really an it's arrow. It's supposed to be an too. arrow, but you know, yeah. we, we might have used it a little bit. Where is it on this? Um, really, yeah, I'm really. Totally she's, she's she's not good at this. No, there we go. <laughs> so, I've got. There's the white little arrow. Yeah, here. But notice, there's still that straight line, which is what you want to have in front of your feed dogs. So it's so easy. It so just sets. I'm just going to tip it in, and. It Wiggle really only bit. tips in one way, so it, yep. it's going to get flush. Yep, because and this then, little guy's here. You have to come in from, this, from side. this side and go that way. Yep. So that's it. And then you ready for it? This is so hard, guys. So hard. Then you're going to slide this over, and you're going to push it down, and it's going to click in place. Ta-da! So Karen, you probably have something. Um, yes, that is absolutely fine. But you probably just have something stuck in the little popper mechanism that's in there. Yeah, there's probably. And next time we have it in here, um, right. well, yes, yeah, probably some thread <laughs> that's not where it's supposed to be. Um, we can absolutely fix that for you. But yes, it's not a problem for you to do that. And then so. um, bobbin goes in just like before, under and around, and then your bobbin case. So funny story. Yes. I can't tell you how many times I've sat down and I've showed somebody that and they'll say, I take it. Mm -hmm. It's literally like, oh my Lord, that's so wonderful. I want one of those. Right. If you struggle with your other one, um, it can be a real, um, it's a real... pain. And like every time you get a thread jam, it's a whole hassle because it's not just that you have to clear the thread jam. It's that you have to take the needle plate off and you have to, I mean, you have to it's a process. You got to, you got to find all the right tools. You got to make sure you don't lose those pieces and all of that. It's, mm -hmm. it's just such a joy. What does Trish say? That is really far and I don't have my glasses on. Like the presser foot lift, when you use it all the time and then sit at a machine that doesn't have one, you still go through the motions. <laughs> yes. Not wrong. Yes. Um, also like the, don't have to lower my foot to push the go button. Right. I can't tell how many times I sit in front of a machine here that is not this one and I'm, and it beeps at me. Yes. <laughs> the machine yells at me, guys. The Can struggle you believe is it? real. The struggle is totally yes. real. But um, it is such a joy, you know, and it's funny because those little things we don't think really matter. But when you put them all together, it's just such a, it's just a relaxing everything to sit down and do a project because right. everything is so much easier. Yes. It's just so fun. It's really funny, though, um, you how how quickly you're you get you build muscle memory you know um you, you're just so used Not to doing wrong. something and then like Not you wrong. sit down and you go to push a button and you're like nope that's not where that that's not where that's supposed to be right yeah and switching brand machines i'm sure is much harder yeah yeah some of the buttons are in um just close enough that they're not quite the same yeah what did you say is here like your needle threader or something yes that's down here that you always hit the so wrong I, instead of hitting uh yeah my needle threader and my go button are like in the same spot on two different brands of machines and so i all the time uh, sit down at the machine and instead of hitting the threader button which is over here um i hit the the start button and then it starts embroidering <laughs> i didn't thread it so, yeah it tells you pretty soon it does yeah it's, <laughs> that doesn't fix the problem 
So Holly, yes, I can totally feel your pain on that. I have a serger that lets me sew with the foot up. I have a fix for that. Mm, Me too. It's a Um, triumph. It's a triumph. (laughs) That one will not let you sew with the foot up. And um, it's on my to-do list. Hopefully life will settle down here a little bit. Yeah. And I can uh, make that, that switch. So uh, yes, it's, it's definitely, um, and surgery stitches are just not fun to take out. No, I mean, they're not, they're not that bad if you know which piece to cut. Right. And which piece to pull. If you cut the wrong one. Yeah. It's it, it, then it sucks. But like when you sew with your foot up, you would think that it would be like a mess that's easy to clean up, but sometimes mm-hmm. it's like a knot. It is a huge mess because it doesn't feed at all. And it right. just ends it's up just, in the same spot. Yeah, you get a whole bunch of crap in the same spot. Yes. <laughs> Maybe after combo machine. Yeah. <laughs> we all have our priorities, yeah, right? Yeah. So, you know. It's good to have a list. It's absolutely good to have a list. I am um, I have been purging in my sewing room because, you know, I'm getting ready for um those You new- have some cabinets I coming. have yeah, three, I, I did. I, three new sewing cabinets. She totally cabinets. took the die there, guys. I did. Three cabinets. I'm super excited. Um, And I am not a patient person, though. I'm, I'm sure you figured that out. So this waiting thing is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> and the great thing is, it's even a longer wait right now than it normally is because of just production times and shipments. And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, she's got a little ways to go. I do. It is. <laughs> so I've been, um, I've been trying to, like, prep the room so that when the cabinets come, it'll just go in and out. It'll just go in and I'm ready to go. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I even, you, I, when I was doing this this weekend, I, I just knew that you would just die laughing at what I was doing. So I have, you've seen those color drawers that I have my thread in. So I had room for two more. And so there was a gap. So I, I said to Dave, I'm like, I think I should just fill the gap with those all the way across the wall. He's like, yeah, that's a good idea. And uh, so we went to get the two cabinets. And I had to go to two different stores because I needed of course. I needed a big one and a littler one. To make you, it work. To make the, yep. Yeah, to make the math work, right? So then I'm like, I'm <laughs> pulling on the drawers and the threads are all falling down. And I've got this brilliant idea. I'm like, I'm going to go get some golf tees. And I'm going to glue, glue those them golf to the tees to the, the bottom so the threads stay in place. Yeah. So as that sounds great in theory, but I have so much thread dumped right. into some random drawers. I would have to have multiple colors per or multiple drawers per color mm-hmm. for some colors. Yeah. And that would annoy me. I, I get more than the mess inside the drawer. I, I keep I'm debating. Like, I think I have more, I am more OESD threads than I do anything. I was thinking about doing those in numerical order and then doing the other ones just by color because then it would make that more makes sense. total sense. You should totally do that. <laughs> I just keep going downstairs. Find all this time in your life. You know, I instead of sewing, I'm just farting around with this because, of course, (laughs) my 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 machine that I want to stitch is not in a cabinet. Right. So, um, I you know I want to sew on the luminaire because it's such a dream to sew with, and I don't have I don't have to call it bad words. You know what I've got? Yeah. Cabinet my husband built for me. Yes. Total custom. Yes. He did such a great job. I am just so impressed with him. He's on my good good list for yeah. a long time, I think. Yeah. Um, it's going to take some effort for brownie me to get points. off of yeah, that. He yeah, he's got lots of brownie, brownie points, points built there. up on that one. He doesn't watch, though. He doesn't know. No, but um, it might get back to him. There's other people to do, but... <laughs> don't tell. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I ask me sometime when you're in, and I'll show you pictures. I yeah. won't bore everybody here today, but um, he did such a beautiful job, and it's... Yep. I have, he actually built me an insert for when I'm sewing instead mm-hmm. of embroidering. So that, I mean, yeah, I've got it all. It's so wonderful. <laughs> Dave offered to build a cabinet for me, but, um, I really, I, I have always loved those koala cabinets and, yeah. uh, um, you know, I, I really wanted it to be white. And, um, after playing around with some wood at the house, and staining and whitewashing some stuff. I was like, yeah, no, I, I would rather somebody else do the white part with me. Um, it's funny. I used to, you go through stages, right? Everything used to be like an oak colored. And I, I really loved that. And then I had some birch stuff, which was really pretty. And now I'm on a white phase, but yeah, I'll have to um, be in a white phase. I mean, my cabinet die. doesn't match anything. So a little bit of backstory here, guys. My he dad, go-to new stuff. He totally could. Um, we're running out of wood, unfortunately. So we need there's another tree. We need to cut down another tree. My dad <laughs> cut down a tree 
um, that was a beautiful black walnut tree. And he had the wood plane and he put it in his pole barn and it sat there. And so we got this whole conversation. There was a cabinet that came into the store and I was like, Jeff, I really like this. I'm going to buy it. And he asked me how much it was. And I told him and he's like, I'll build you one. <laughs> and so um, he did. It took a little while. Um, it wasn't an over to the night process, but when it actually came down to, okay, are you actually going to do this or am I going to buy a cabinet? Because I really need one. Right. Um, he was like, nope, nope, I'll do it. And so we went to my dad and got the wood and um, he got some new cool tools. I bought him a planer and I bought him some really nice tools. Um, and so, it, but I got a beautiful cabinet. Yes. <laughs> so, and we still spent less money than we would have had we bought it. Um, and I have something that every time I sit down at it, I just melt. Yep. Don't and tell you've him. got the Don't tools. Don't tell him. <laughs> so you can make more. We can absolutely do that. And yes. I asked him, I'm like, so, you know, I could totally sell these. Would you like to build cabinets and, and make no. some money? And he was like, well, maybe. <laughs> I just, a lot of work. It, it was a lot of work, um, but he, he's, um, he can't sit and do nothing. I am totally good with grabbing my iPad or book or book on my iPad and totally checking out of reality for hours at a time. I, I'm totally good with that or sitting down and vegging and watching TV. He just can't sit. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll watch football on Sundays, and that's like the stillest I see him at any given time. Um, but you know, he's like, "I'm gonna tile this today because I'm bored," and I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, I think he could could do it. He did a beautiful job, but um, I don't don't think that's where his uh, his thing is. his thing is at. Right yeah, now. I mean, um, you know, that's funny. It, woodworking is just one of those things. It's. Um, it's really, a lot of times I find, uh, people find it really enjoyable to do for themselves, but it's, it's- As soon as you do it for somebody else, it's almost like embroidery. Yeah. I can embroider for 10 hours. I, I have actually pulled all nighters and stitched all night, usually right before Christmas, but stitched all night and never went to bed until the following evening and just kept going and going and going um, and enjoyed every minute. And as soon as I do something for somebody, I'm just like, oh my God, I have to go embroider again. Right. <laughs> it's just, it, it's not as fun. Um, you know, and, and I don't embroider that much for myself. Most of what I make, I give away. I don't have a ton of things. But it's, it's different. Um, but it's between... still different when you're being paid to do it, quote yeah. unquote. Yeah. Um, than the joy of. Sounds much of... fun. Mm -hmm. It just takes all the. I don't know. It's funny. It's like, yes, you just Karen, want to he do is it. absolutely a keeper. You just don't want to do it when you're. Just don't paid. tell him I said. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anybody. So um, we're supposed to start moving. Oh, we're not moving We've been enough. sitting still for too long, evidently. Right. The other day I was doing puzzle pieces mm -hmm. and I was folding fabric and um, it's like, great job keeping busy. I'm like, I'm literally doing this with my hands. <laughs> and my watch is telling me how wonderful I'm doing. So it's nice. Maybe I'll just wave my hand yeah. around and it'll think I'm doing something. <laughs> nope, it didn't work. Oh, Lisa's at a concert over here. <laughs> You've been to a lot more of those. Oh, wait. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta love it. I'm active again. Good job. We're so easily amused these days, aren't we? I tell you, life is great. So, um, we are coming up on our hour. So, yes. Let's, um, we've been rambling we've, about We've been nothing. rambling about all kinds of things, so I apologize. But, you know, it's... We don't actually get a lot of time to sit and talk to one another. Mm -mm. I know that probably surprises some of you, but we can go like a whole week of, did I tell you? And, right? and that, you know, so this is the time we, we actually have to, sit next to each other. Right. We have to put it on a list. It's, this is what I want to tell you this week. Right? It's, it's, it's absolutely terrible. Um, so we have um, something coming up every month for the next four months um, of not just class type stuff, but event things. Mm -hmm. So the first one is tomorrow. So tomorrow we are doing um, the So Steady um, event. It starts at 10 o'clock in the morning. And um, for any of you who don't know what that is yet, you can still sign up if you would like. Um, it's completely free. It is ruler work. So how much ruler work have you done? Um, I've done a fair amount of yeah? ruler work. Yes. I have done a fair amount of buying rulers. I did a whole quilt using I, um, I, ruler I have work templates. Played. Um, I have not actually done a project with it, but I own all the good stuff. Yes. <laughs> I have um, a beautiful labeled box that has everything in it. <laughs> I did my ruler work on um, like a sit down um, mid long arm, mm -hmm. you know, in, yeah. a, in a table, um, which was really, um, it was, it's so I'm warm in dying. here. Um, it was, uh, it was pretty simple to do because I had lots of space. 
um, it's funny since then when we had that so steady thing that we did mm-hmm. here um it never occurred to me before to turn the machine no um, what a big difference that makes though if you just you know we literally s- put the end cap towards you and turn the body of the machine away right um even if you have a machine that's smaller um you know we move like this when we're quilting we don't move like this and so you're constantly running into running the side into of the your body machine, of the machine. Mm-hmm. and by just turning your machine um that makes like such a difference a sweater makes a right off, makes. Wow. <laughs> but they have those tables that they you do. can turn um and they'll be talking about that stuff tomorrow and then they'll be showing you all kinds of different gadgets um lisa's a collector well um, it's not that i haven't rulers. used it i just mm-hmm. haven't actually done a quilt with it right. i've played with them and i love it um, and of course, so then I, I was like, this is freaking awesome. So yes. I bought them all. Yes. <laughs> um, and then I labeled a box and I stored them all nice and pretty up on a shelf. <laughs> Unfortunately, I just haven't gotten back to it. You know, we all have priorities and unfortunately things. my list is way longer than I will ever, ever get to, but, yes. um, it's uh, it, it's a lot of fun. So quilting with ruler work is tomorrow's event, and again, you can sign up for that still. And where can they do that? They can do um, that um, on Facebook. They can do that um, on our. If you receive the email, we sent a couple of emails. Um, did you put it in our um, on our website? That's a great question. Probably not. Probably not. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, if you can't find it. Um, you can email us and we can send you a link. Um, I will post um, a the live. Last month is a complete blur. It is. I have no idea what I have done. We'll post a live link um, tomorrow to um, the website tomorrow morning, uh, making sure that you can just click on it and then go right to the website if you haven't already um, registered. The advantage of registering, so let me tell you why you would want to register. If you register, they're going to be giving away prizes and things like that. If you register, um, you can win. If you don't register, then you are just viewing and watching, and they won't have your name to pull you from the drawing. So um, it's definitely worth it. Um, What is that in the class? Um, Carol, that is a ruler work. So um, So Steady is a company that um, they brought ruler work to domestic sewing machines. So we used to just do ruler work on long arm machines. <clears throat> um, that video will stay up for four weeks. The shopping portal will be open for two more weeks. Um, they will have specials and uh, stuff. So um, that's what you can do tomorrow. Um, Look at that. Yeah, it's there. So if you go to our class calendar, um, you can find the link. I did it. <laughs> It is there. Um, so Labu Sewing Center dot com on the Click left on hand the class side, calendar. class calendar. Yep. And then um, on tomorrow's date, mm-hmm. there is a link. When you click on that, the inf- the details will pop up, and there's a link right there to sign up. Yeah, so you can do that. And um, myself, pet myself. Right? <laughs> um, but that starts at ten o'clock tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Um, and it will be up on that link for two more weeks. So if you can't watch it live, um, it'll still be up there, and it'll be a place for you so to cruise. They can watch it for four weeks, but they can order for two with the discount. Yes. Okay. And so I'm gonna say something that I maybe I shouldn't say. <laughs> So, um, you know, I have heard lots of people say to me, I'm disappointed that I can't rewatch watch some of this later on. So if you watch on a tablet of some sort, many of them have an option that allow you to record your screen. I'm not really saying this, so it's totally <laughs> illegal to be doing this. But if you were to do that, you could watch it later. <laughs> Tony's back there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't know what she's talking about. Uh, so if you wanted to keep it, um, you know, in your iPad or your um, book, sometimes you do that. it will allow you to record your screens. That, yes. That, it depends on your individual, whatever it is. Right. If you have a mobile device, um, like a cell phone. You know, <laughs> most of these things that we're doing have at least some extension of viewing so even if you don't have that or you don't want to deal with that or whatever um you know this one in particular four weeks is a long time a long time um you know but we've had them where there's you know 24 hours 48 hours Mm -hmm. we've had them that was a week yeah you know so there's been different things and each company has their own set of guidelines that they do Mm -hmm. um but uh but no one would know if you did that 
<laughs> see nothing. I hear nothing. I see nothing. Um, so you have that option. Um, and then, like I said, you have it on your little device there. So, all right. So that is tomorrow, tomorrow. January, January. We, we, um, we're going to kick off the new year for quilting, right? We are. This is really exciting. Are you excited about it? I actually am because I have quite a few things that I want to do this for. So yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see exactly how they do it. I mean, I certainly have right ideas and, and thoughts so, of how I was planning to do it, but I might make some adjustments to yeah. make it easier for myself. We were talking about collecting. So I have collected several of the Amelie Scott design, uh, quilt in your hoop designs, mm -hmm. and not used any of them. <laughs> um, I think I have one set and maybe an expansion, mm -hmm. something or other, but I haven't used it. Yes. Um, but I, I do have something. I have so. helped people do it. I just haven't physically done it myself. But um, January so what are we talking 20th. About? When, so what is what is her design? Do you, uh, edge to edge quilting in so, the embroidery hoop. In the embroidery hoop, literally, basically, like if you were sending it to a long arm quilter, that's what we're talking about. So showing you how and the tools to make it easier um, and the designs that have basically all been designed specifically for that um, and showing you all of those steps and how to take all of those pieces, put them together and make your life so much easier. Right. Um, so I'm very excited. So that is January 20th um, and that will start at 11 a.m. Now I did not write down and it's far enough away. I don't remember. I think it's 48 hours on dimes. I feel like it's short. I, it's not hours. super, super long, but they do have the ability to review, but I'm not sure if it's either 24 or 48 okay. hours. I don't think it's like a week or, or longer. And then, um, and then, <laughs> two more things. And so, we have February. Right? In February, this is really, really excited. Brand new. Right? Um, you guys might have heard that Lisa likes freestanding lace. I just like bit. lace in general. <laughs> but freestanding's <laughs> great because I can make that. So, um, OESD has um, created a freestanding lace event. So they are um, offering that. We signed up like the moment yes. <laughs> that it came out. So that is going to be. Um, it's a Friday. Why did I not write that down? Uh, I wrote, wrote down the, the time. It's that was really smart. February. It was 12th? Um, February 12th. Yes, it is. I have no it's idea why I didn't write that down. Good job, me. I won't pat myself on the back for that. But it is at 3 p.m. That's funny. You didn't do it for the Kimberbell one. Oh, you did it yeah. down here. Yeah. I got interrupted. <laughs> That's true. Can you imagine? <laughs> right? So So anyway, um, middle of February, we'll be doing the OESD freestanding. We'll certainly send out more yeah. information for signups and all of that stuff. We're just stuff. letting you know what's coming what's up. What's coming up because we're so excited. Um, so that is February's event. We're still planning on doing the foot fetish and... Um, whatever virtual classes that we can squeeze in there and make happen. Um, unfortunately, I know we've said this before, virtual classes are very different to set up. And what we are able to show you virtually is not the same as when I can lean over your shoulder and say, oh, no, 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 move your fabric two inches to the left. Um, and not being able to see what you're doing really hinders our ability to be able to teach um, a lot of things. So um, we have scheduled some things and if we don't feel like we could do it to the best of our ability we haven't scheduled it because we don't want to deprive you guys of a class in the way it should have been taught based on that so there will still be other things it's not just these events that's not the only thing nope. that's going to be happening during these months so but these are easy for us because um someone else has to do the legwork we just have to show up and just, say hi we just check the boxes and say yeah. hi this is so much fun and then um, so in march this is a little bit different than the others um but there is a new um kimberbell one day event so it's called the garden guild um and we have scheduled that uh, one day event for Saturday, March 20th. At this time, I am assuming that will still need to be virtual. So I've only scheduled the one day. Um, we are going to do for like 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So I'll just be doing that that Saturday. And of course, Sarah will have to handle anything else that walks in the door. Um, it's, it's going to be a $99 thing. So that comes with everything that you need to make the projects there. So you have all of your fabrics. We include the stabilizer, um, the whole, everything that you need um, to make those for that $99. And it is three, four. I can't remember. I think it's four. three, three or four projects. Yeah. It's been, it's been three a hot half. second since I looked. <laughs> three and a half. That's, that's all we're going to get to. No, I was kidding. Um, so 
that is coming up in March. Mm -hmm. um, and as a virtual event, we don't have a limit of numbers. If magically things clear up, um, vaccines are everywhere and we are actually able to do things in store. I will pick up more dates so that we can actually have bodies in here because even if they allow us to do stuff here, it still will only be small numbers. So um, we will add dates, but that's still three months away yet. So we've got some, some wiggle room on that. And of course there's a new quilt coming out. Um, so we've got lots of stuff that it's coming up. Um, Kimber Bell, actually. Yeah, we do. Um, there's the fill in the blank program, um, we which sent out we sent out an email, email today, today for. Um, so you're welcome to um, get in on that. Uh, there's a new bench pillow and a new um, mini quilt, wall hanging, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's like 40 by 40, I think, is that one um, um, that you can uh, pre register for if you would like, and we will get those out. So lots of really great stuff coming up, and um, we hope to. Yeah, um, add to that. let's just go back to the fill in the blank really quick. Sure. Um, because we have a limited supply of those, um, we so did send I'm, out I'm an email. Now. now you're cold. <laughs> we sent out an email today um, that uh, in order to guarantee your spot in there, um, you do have to prepay for all six um, of those. Uh, if we don't get 25 people or 50 people that then you can to buy it, them then we'll um, have supplies last yeah then um, we'll have some months by months month so month by month. Month. oh i really like february's i want february's um as long as we have remaining pieces left we can do that but um if you want to be in it um there is a link in the email that i sent out so you can pay right through that link yep today um and reserve, and your, reserve your spot re reserve your blank yes reserve your blank <laughs> for the next six months um and saturday saturday those will become available yep. um so basically that will be a first of the month thing we are not allowed um to pre-sell in the aspect of giving them out prior to the first of whatever month that happens to be in. And since so, we're close on the first of this month. We are close the first. So it will be um, Saturday. Saturday, any of you who have prepaid, you will get an email with the files. The kit um, is at this point not cut yet, so I don't know how much it's going to be, but we do plan on getting the fabrics available so that you can just pick up the kit along with the blank. Um, if you want. If you the choose to do so, the kit. So any embellishments or fabrics um, that are needed to that. We will set stuff up for that. You can purchase if you would like, but it is not included in the fill in the blank program. It's yep. just an option. An option. Add on. We know that you guys are starting to get a, um, a surplus. You might have a few things right. laying around the house. If you, but, um, if you don't, and you don't want to have to figure that out, we will help have you. that ready. Yeah, for but you we didn't well. want that to be a requirement. So, um, yeah. So steady edge to edge, freestanding Kimberbell, fill in the blank All kinds quilts of stuff. um we have a really fun yep. uh 2021 and yep. that's just like the and first quarter that's just the first quarter and i know i've got embroidery club coming up in um i was literally looking through fabrics and and yeah. the like of what i'm going to do so that's coming up in january mm -hmm. um i'm looking like that that middle week i think like the 13th and the 16th um at close yep so um we'll do those um pin tuck feet are going to be uh, is the, the foot, foot fetish, fetish. I still love that. We'll have, to, we'll have to come up with the uh, Mandalorian or right. whatever is the Wonder code. Woman. <laughs> we'll come up with a, a great code um, yes. for those of you who are in class. Um, we try to have a little bit of fun, fun. with that because you got to take your fun where you can find it. That's so, right. We appreciate you guys finding your fun with us this afternoon. Um, I hope that this cleaning um, little demo thing will help you guys out. It's certainly a very important thing. Not that we don't love to see you. We don't like to see you when you're unhappy. <laughs> so hopefully um, there's like some, there's some frowny faces in there. Oh no, <laughs> no frowny faces. Hopefully that just means that they're super excited. <laughs> All right. So again, we really appreciate you guys checking in with us. We hope that that really helped you out. And um, we appreciate you guys spending your time with us. Yep. Thanks for listening. All right. To you us. guys take care. Have a great one. Bye.